Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode right here on 2020 Flight Simmers. Today we have a great episode on the G1000 and how to do a VNAV approach. So we're gonna to try to keep this as simple as possible. Oh, and by the way, if you are new to the channel, go down there and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell because you don't wanna miss another future video just like this one. So if you wanna know more about the G1000 and how to do a VNAV approach, then stay tuned right here on 2020 Flight Timmers. All right, everyone. So we are in the cockpit again of the SR-22. We're also using a custom livery today. So if you'd like to check that out, link will be down in the description. And by the way, if anybody has any questions along the way, please go ahead and post those down below in the comments section. I love interacting with the community. Let's and get right it. into the G1000 and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the flight plan that we have got programmed in here today. This is gonna be a pretty simple video on how to use a VNAV approach. And uh, basically we're gonna be inbound to KPDX today and we are gonna be following the Timbers 2 approach, I believe. Now, if we go ahead and look at our flight plan today, you're gonna to see all the altitudes programmed in here on the right. So what we want to do is we wanna find the lowest altitude of the bunch. So all we need to do is go ahead and scroll down until we find our lowest altitude that we're gonna to have to input into the FMS or the GPS until we pick up the glide slope. And that is 2,000 feet. So right now we are approximately 11,000 feet. So here's all we have to do for VNAV to operate. Come right over here to our altitude indicator and we are going to set that all the way down to 2,000 feet. All right, so now that we've got that set on 2,000 feet, we're pretty much halfway there. So the next thing that we need to do is to activate the VNAV feature. Now every plane is gonna be different, so you wanna take note on where that VNAV button is. In the SR-22, it's right here on the center console, we hit that VNAV button. Once you activate VNAV, at the very top here, you're gonna see in the autopilot indication box here, it's gonna say VPATH. So that's gonna let you know that VPATH is activated in the G1000. Now, if we go ahead and scroll up here on our flight plan, you can see that our next flight restriction that we're gonna hit here is 7,000 feet. And if we go ahead and look over here on the altitude side, you can see 7,000 feet is our next flight restriction here. So what's gonna happen is the plane is going to follow the VEF path all the way down to 7,000 feet, and then it's gonna stop at our flight restriction of 7,000 feet. So as you see, that's why you only need to program in here your bottom altitude because the GPS will keep you on course the entire way. But as you can see, it's pretty simple to set up. So if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. And while you're down there, smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us out and gets us found by other viewers just like yourself. While we're on track to our next waypoint, why don't we take in all the beautiful scenery that Microsoft Flight Simulator has to offer. All right, everyone. So we are getting close to our next waypoint here. Come down here and look at the GPS here. Uh, we have about 3.6 miles until we get the vans. Now, once we get the vans, it looks like here, if we look down in our active VNAV profile here, we can see the top of descent is gonna come in about one minute. So the other cool thing, if you look on our map that we have here, once we get to Vance, you'll see this BOD, you'll also have a TOD symbol on your map. So that's gonna show the top of descent where that's gonna start, and then it will show your bottom of descent where you're gonna reach that altitude. 
Now, if we look over here on the PFD side, we can see we're gonna reach our next waypoint in one second. We have just reached it. And as you can see right here shows our top of descent. So once we get to this point and look at top of descent, just went up another minute down here. So I think they still got some work to do here on the GPS. But again, I think we could look past a couple of these things because we actually have an active working VNAV. Holy cow. All right. So now if we go ahead and look over here on the PFD side while we're getting closer to our top of descent, uh, we can see here that right here on our magenta marker here on the right hand side, this shows our negative vertical speed that we're gonna need to maintain the V-path. And our V-path symbol is coming down beautifully right here on the left. Now this acts just like an ILS when you're coming in for an ILS approach. And you're gonna wanna keep this little magenta marker right here dead center if you're gonna be following this on your own. Now it's always good to come in on a V-path and pick that V-path up from underneath of it and not from over top of it. Just like in this situation, we came in underneath of the V-path and that path is now coming down. And right up here at the top, you can see V-path has now lit up in the green, letting us know that we are now on V-path. Now, once you start on your descent on your V-path, you have to pull back the throttle just a bit so we don't overspeed. And then we can just go ahead and monitor this and make sure we're maintaining the proper course. Now we go back over here to the MFD side and zoom out just a bit. And we look up here to the top near Flower. We can see our bottom of descent is gonna put us right at 7,000 feet, right before our waypoint. And as you see, I have not had to touch my altitude bug at all. After you hit the V-Path button, it pretty much is Set plug and play. It and forget it. You don't really have to do anything at all now until we get on our final approach, which we will be doing in another video. This video is just how to do a V-Nav. And I think we're just about done with the video but we're gonna go through a couple more waypoints. If you'd like to stay with us throughout the rest of these waypoints here, please do, we'd love to have you along. But if you're gonna end the video now because you got all the information you need to do your V-Path approach, then I really thank you and appreciate you watching the video today. If you haven't done so, go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And while you're down there, smash on that thumbs up button. And we will see you guys on the next one. For all of our other viewers that are sticking around, let's go along for the rest of the ride and see just how easy the V-Path is to operate. In the meantime, while we're on our way down to 7,000, let's go ahead and take a look outside of the beautiful scenery inbound to Portland. All right, everyone, so it looks like we are closing in on our 7,000 foot marker here. And as we and as look we... over here to our flight plan menu, our next flight restriction is right at 6,000 feet. So we should be coming up at 7,000 right at flower. We'll maintain that 7,000 feet till we get to full, And then when we get to sail, we will be at 6,000 feet. Boy, where do they come up with the names for these waypoints? Oh, and by the way, if you have any questions while we're going through any of this, or you'd like to know any more in-depth videos, please go ahead and post those down in the comments, and I will try to get to those as soon as I can. And if you are still with us, I really appreciate you sticking with us through to the next part of the video. We're only gonna go down to the 5,000 foot marker here because any further than that, as you can see here, is gonna put us down into our approach and the approach we're gonna do in another video. So it looks like we hit our 7,000 foot marker. We're gonna up the throttle just a bit so that we can pick back up speed. And as you can see right here, uh, right next to our altitude bug, we have 6,000 in here. That is our next flight restriction that we're going to meet at 6,000 feet at Sasail.
All right, everyone. So we are still at 7,000 feet. We're just approaching the full here. And as you can see, the if we look down here at the active VNAV profile, looks like we're going to hit a top of descent right about 36 seconds. And if we go ahead and look over here on our V or our V path profile, you can see the magenta marker moving down to the center here. Now, as we approach top of descent again, the V path icon is going to light up here in green and we're going to start on our descent down. Remember to pull back the throttle just a bit. And if we look over here to the MFD side, you can see 6,000 is our next flight restriction, which is also here on our PFD, as well as it gives us some target data here in the VNAV profile. But the plane is going to do all of that for us, so we really don't have to do anything but sit back, relax, and enjoy the views out there today. And I want to take a poll out there. How many other people like the SR-22? The only problem I have with the SR-22 is the night lighting. For anybody that's using the UWA mod for night lights, that's the, pretty much the only plane that they don't have in there. So flying this plane at night really stinks. <laughs> but I think the plane is very underrated because it's gorgeous inside here once you have the right livery. By the way, if you haven't checked out that livery we're using today, go ahead down below in the description. That will be listed down there for you. All right, so we're gonna go back down here and look at the PFD side, and you can see our next flight restriction that's popped up here is 5,000 feet. And over here on the MFD side, we can then verify that also at 5,000 feet. We can see our top of descent is going to be in about a minute and 23 seconds, also listed right here on the map with a TOD symbol, as well as the BOD symbol right in front of the micro waypoint, which is 5,000 feet. All right, so we're going to take a look back at the PFD side. We can see our magenta little marker here for our V-Path is coming down near center. And on the right-hand side on the MFD, as you can see, we're just approaching the TOD marker. Our next stop, 5,000 feet. So I think we're going to end the video here today on our way down to 5,000 feet. I want to thank everybody for sticking with us throughout the entire video. If you have any questions, please please, please go ahead and post those down below in the comments section, and I will get to those as soon as I can. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell, as well as show us some love with that thumbs up button. And all my flight simmers out there, keep the blue side up. We will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everyone.